Hello everyone. The feast of the Ascension marks the Christian belief that Jesus ascended into heaven on the 40th day of Easter. The 40th day after Easter Sunday is always a Thursday and therefore the feast has traditionally been celebrated on Thursdays. But in some parts of the world the celebration is transferred to the Sunday following the 40th day that is the 7th Sunday of Easter. In this way more people can participate. This year it fell on May 25th but we celebrate it today. What is ascension? What significance does the ascension of Jesus Christ hold for our faith? Friends, much of our Christian beliefs are derived from two sources, tradition and scripture. There is no written evidence of celebrating the event until the 4th century when one of the early church fathers, Augustine of Hippo, preached about it in a sermon. It is widely believed that the feast has been observed since the time of the apostles, dating back to 68 AD. There are many references both in the Old and New Testament of the Bible concerning ascension. Some of these references occur before the event. For example, in Psalm 110, David foretold the ascension of the Lord when he spoke of the enthronement of the Lord at the right hand of the Father. The Lord Jesus himself had spoken to his disciples about his ascension. For example, while they struggled to understand Jesus' suffering and death, he told them that he was going to the Father. While on trial, Jesus had told the high priest, From now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of God the Most Powerful and coming on the clouds of heaven. While Mary Magdalene was at the tomb weeping, Jesus had told her of his ascension and returned to the Father. The Apostle Peter in his sermon at Pentecost and in his first letter to Christian communities cited David's prediction and asserted the resurrection of Jesus Christ and his ascension to the throne at the right hand of God. However, only the Gospel of Luke and the Acts of the Apostles have described the event itself. Although there is considerable overlap between these two texts, Luke, probably the author of both books, gives us an inside glimpse at how the events might have occurred. Friends, in the Gospel, Luke recounts that Jesus had led his disciples out of the city of Jerusalem to a place near Bethany. And he raised his hands and blessed them. As he blessed them, he parted from them and was taken up to heaven. So, as Jesus was blessing his disciples, much like a priest would bless the people, two things occurred. Jesus parted from them and was taken up to heaven. The word taken up or anaphero in Greek means to cause, to move from a lower to a higher position. Jesus was taken up therefore means a similar action happened to Jesus. He did not initiate the action of moving. He was lifted up by God to heaven or was taken up to heaven. What is heaven? Where is it? In the biblical times, Heaven was viewed as the abode of God and the angels. It is somewhere up there, although not geographically identifiable. Some people say that heaven is just a pictorial representation of your nearness to God and indeed as another sphere, another dimension from the earthly, physical dimension that we live in. Jesus' resurrected body had the ability to adapt to both the physical demands of the earth and the spiritual dimension. So, Jesus was literally bodily lifted up to heaven. Friends, in the Acts of the Apostles, Luke provides four more details on the event. He begins his account by addressing Theophilus, the same man to whom he earlier wrote the first book, the Gospel of Luke. In the Gospel, he writes, It seemed right to me to give you, Theophilus, an orderly account, so that your Excellency may know the truth of all you have been taught. Friends, it appears that Luke 
Luke wanted to help Theophilus, a person of rank, perhaps a Roman officer, know all the truth about Jesus and the church, so that his faith would be made strong in Jesus Christ. Hence, in the opening lines, Luke recalls that he had already dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up. Even though Luke had recounted Jesus' birth, infancy, miracles, teachings, and his relationship with his followers in the first book, he is particularly referring in this instance to what Jesus did and taught from the time of his resurrection up until his ascension into heaven. Friends, what did Jesus do after his resurrection? For 40 days he appeared to his disciples, encouraging them, instructing them, guiding them, and preparing them for the work that he wanted them to accomplish. All these appearances and instructions were meant to prove that he had a real physical body and that he was truly alive. Friends, how does Luke describe this fact in his writing? After resurrection, Jesus left the tomb. He first appeared to Mary Magdalene. Then he appeared to the two disciples journeying along the road to Emmaus, and with whom he conversed, stayed and dined. He next appeared to the apostles behind locked doors, eventually revealing himself, inviting them to touch his wounded hands and feet, and then opening their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He instructed them to begin their mission in Jerusalem and thereafter to spread out to the ends of the earth. But first, they had to remain in Jerusalem until they were given the power of the Spirit. Lastly, he urged them not to worry about the times or seasons, but simply to carry out their mission of proclaiming the good news to all nations. Even while saying all these, he was lifted up and taken from their sight. Friends, Luke writes, When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. Friends, in these words, Luke mentions three additional elements which are not in his gospel. The first element is that the apostles were looking on as he was lifted up, and they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, meaning that they had seen Jesus go up with their own eyes. The second element is that a cloud took him from their sight, meaning that Jesus did not disappear from their sight until he reached the cloud which enveloped him. Up until he reached the clouds, his body had retained the same form that he had before his suffering and death. But when he was taken up into the cloud, they were prevented from seeing him further. The third element is that a pair of angels appeared and announced that the same Jesus would return from heaven in glory in the same way they had seen him go up into heaven. Friends, Paul confirms that Jesus himself will come down from heaven. Luke concludes his gospel by mentioning that after the ascension, the apostles worshipped Jesus and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and remained in Jerusalem praising God, while stating in the Acts of the Apostles that the apostles returned to Jerusalem and awaited the Holy Spirit. Friends, what is the message for us? 1. The Ascension marks the end of Easter season. 2. By entering into heaven, Jesus completed his redemption work. It reminds us that heaven is our ultimate hope, and therefore all of our activities should be directed toward this end. Paul says that focusing on righteous matters and performing them bring the God of peace, the very presence of God. And if we set our hearts and minds on the things above, we shall also appear with Christ who is seated at the right hand of God. 3. Just as Jesus went into heaven, so too will all Christians. 
Accordingly, let us develop a heavenly mindset that is consumed with the things of God. Let us think of the glories of heaven. Even the thought of heaven can illuminate our whole Christian life. It can inspire and encourage us to be more heavenly minded. 4. We have traced Jesus' birth, infancy, preaching, miracles, suffering, death and resurrection from the beginning to the conclusion, that is, from the Advent season to Jesus' ascension. God was born in the person of Jesus to liberate us from sin and death. He taught and preached the love of God. He healed the sick and fed the hungry. He forgave sins and reconciled people. He suffered and died. He resurrected on the third day. He appeared to his followers for forty days and finally ascended on high and is now seated in glory at the right hand of the Father. Now. We have been entrusted with the work He had begun in us and for us. Hence, to carry on Jesus' work, 1. We must believe that Jesus is God, He is alive, and everything He has taught us is true. 2. We must obey His commandments. 3. We must have sufficient power of His Holy Spirit before we set out to share the good news. 4. We must stay focused on the personal work of Jesus Christ. Our main task is to spread the gospel and share the hope we have in Christ with others. 5. We must hold, whenever we call on Him, the sure hope of His coming again in glory. Amen. God bless you.